Hi, this is Randy Pike from Tegan. I'm going to show you how to do the motor maintenance on one of our T8 Redline 8 scale motors. Let's get started. So, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take a 3 seconds wrench and you're going to remove all six of the front end valve screws. As you can see, this is a, one of my very well used 1900 8 scale motors, so it's pretty beat up and it's due for this maintenance. So, it should be a good, good time to show you. When you're taking these front end valve screws apart, you really need to pay attention and make sure none of them are stripped. Uh, make sure none of that, you know, now's a good time to replace them if you're going to take them out. And these are just what are responsible to hold the front motor to the motor mount. So this is actually really important screw. So make sure they're all coming out nice and clean and that uh, everything's good. So now that you've got the front end valve screws off, simply just take the front end valve off. Pop that off. Sometimes the bearing will stay, sometimes it won't. This one didn't. Next step is to pull the rotor out of the motor. And then I'm going to take that front bearing right off. Now this should slide off relatively easily. Um, it shouldn't be stuck or jammed. If it, if it does happen to be jammed because you've got burrs on this shaft from, from pinion grub screws, before you take this motor apart, do yourself a favor, take a Dremel and clean those burrs off so that you basically you should be able to slide a pinion gear on and off the shaft quite easily. It shouldn't have any stick to it or anything like that because if a pinion gear sticks to it, the bearing is certainly going to stick to it as well. So make sure that's all cleaned up before you do that. So set this off to the side. I you know, generally set it off to, away from the screws because everything sticks to it. So the next step is you've got your, your front end ball off your bearing. I take the bearing out, take a tape, paper towel. I, I pretty much wipe this down. I don't blow them out with motor spray. Uh, I don't re-oil these bearings. Reason being is that it's an already expensive ABEC 5 graded bearing. Uh, blowing them out with motor spray is going to remove all the lube that's already in the bearing, which is near, next to impossible to get back in. However, what I do check is to make sure this bearing sounds okay. And so what I'm looking for is to make sure that it, it spins freely and I make sure that it doesn't sound dry. I mean, this one's spinning super free, which generally means that it's out of lubrication. So this one's about due to get replaced. So I'll definitely replace that bearing here during this motor maintenance. So the next step is to clean the front end bell off. And you can see that there's a lot of dirt, grime, and, and whatnot in here. This is obviously just straight up aluminum. You can certainly shoot this down with motor spray. Uh, again, I'm, I'm more of a, you know, wiping it down with a paper towel and, and scrubbing on a little bit. Uh, cool little trick and, and a cool little place to find a tool. This is a dentist brush for a dog. Uh, if you go to, to PetSmart, they'll pretty much give you these things for like 50 cents. And you can see that it's got a big end and a small end. And I love these things because they pretty much get into everything, little nook, cranny. And I'll show you another trick for the small end here in a little bit. But basically, I'm scrubbing this thing down blowing it out, use a little compressed air, and making it new again. So I'll set that off to the side. Okay, so the next step is to take off the rear end belt plate. So you're, again, you're going to take the three screws off. These are 564 or 2 millimeters. doesn't matter which. And these also need to be checked. If they're, you know, stripped out, now's the time to replace them. You know, the funny thing is, you know, a stripped out screw, you'll always get it out the one time. If you put it back, you'll never get it out. So take off the rear end belt plate, same thing, just check for dirt and whatnot. Now, another thing that's important to do, and a lot of guys are asking questions about this, take these, the sensor board and the rear bearing out. Um, I, I take it out every time I do the maintenance to clean out the windings. I'll show you how I do that in a second. These are also 2 millimeters or 564s, so make sure these also come out. Also check them for, for being stripped. These are important screws. This holds the rear bearing in place, and if this comes loose, It'll just wreck havoc in the motor. So this is something that definitely needs to get checked, you know, every two or three times going to the racetrack. And I'll show you my, my tricks for, you know, using Loctite on these things and, and, and making sure that they're snug and tight. Uh, this is the, probably the, one of the most common failures that, I've, that I see out in the field is this rear bearing coming loose and guys not catching it. So then three screws, the, the sensor board comes right out of the motor. Again, I, I'm always just taking my scrub brush cleaning these things out, getting the dirt off of them. Be gentle on this. These are obviously a, a printed circuit board component, so just real light brushing, nothing major. What I am looking for, though, if you want to make sure that all the sensors are good, at least physically there, are these, there's the sensors right here, these three black boxes. Make sure all three are there. One of the things I check just every now and then, make sure nothing went through the motor and took them out, make sure they're there in place before I set it off to the side. So here's the rear end bell. You can see the solder tabs. 
Uh, I always check these joints right here for cracks. It's you know, another, you know, eight scales are really rough on things. So if you're going to get a crack solder joint in a motor, this is likely the place you're going to see them. You'll see a, just a nice little crack all the way around the solder tab. So now that you've got down to this point, this is where I stop dis disassembling the can. But I do take my doggy toothbrush and I will literally go in and out of here, lightly brushing all the dirt and grime out of this motor. Um, I, you, know, you can use some motor spray on this thing. I certainly don't think it's necessary. Uh, I think a good little scrub down and uh, some compressed air is probably the, the best thing for it. Uh, just because for you know, whatever reason certain motor sprays do bad things for plastics. And we've got some phenolic material obviously on the solder tabs as well as, as, well as this winding protection plate. So just gentle scrubbing, get the dust out of there, blow it out with some compressed air and it should be just perfectly fine, ready to go back to reassembly. So here's the trick I've come up with to pulling out the rear bearing out of the printed circuit board and the sensor housing. So here's what I do. I actually use the motor as a, as a setup. So I actually just set it down on the end, place the sensor board up on top, and just use your typical Allen wrench setup to, to pop this bearing out. It's pretty simple. It shouldn't take too many taps. And boom, bearing should be out and good to go. So at this point, you should be able to get the bearing out just like that. This rear bearing takes a lot of abuse. It's obviously a lot smaller than the, the front bearing. The reason being is that the front bearing's got all the gear load on it. So we can get away with a smaller bearing out the back. Again, same thing. Just take a paper towel. I wipe mine down. Make sure the cages aren't broke. And again, I'm spinning them. So I actually just take the, the, the rotor and use it to spin. And same as the front one. This one spins really, really freely, which is great. Except that usually means that the grease and the lubrication is missing out of it. So this one's about due. Um, if you're one of the guys that likes to clean them out and reoil them, certainly you can reuse them as long as they're not gritty or broken. Uh, I personally just you know, I like the grease a little bit better. I'm kind of a, I don't get to run as much as, as everyone else maintenance wise. So when I get to run, I want to make sure I can put laps down. And for eight scale, you know, we, we have so much horsepower that, you know, lubing and oiling the bearings just isn't a needed step. The, the grease that comes in them is more than sufficient. Okay, so the first step of reassembly is just basically reverse order. I just take a bearing out of the rear, put a new bearing in. I use an Allen wrench to, to push this in place. Should just seat in there pretty nice and easy. Next, I'm going to install the sensor board. So again, I'm just working with the motor flat. Set the sensor board down and let that drop. Now, the one thing I will say is this is where I use a little bit of Loctite. Again, one of my favorite Loctites, and it's kind of hard to find, but it's definitely worth looking at and tracking it down or even ordering it online, is this Loctite glue stick. And basically, it's like standard blue Loctite, but instead of being liquid and spilling all over the place, you can use just a little bit of dab on the screw and put that in. It doesn't take much, but it definitely will prevent vibration from backing these screws out at a later time. Again, this is the most common failure point right here on the RX-8, is this these set of screws right here coming loose. So... You definitely want to just make sure you get a little bit of Loctite on the threads. Make sure it wipes in. And uh, you should be good to go. And cut it. Okay, so basically, again, we're just keep going to reassembling the unit. Now, something to note, the three motor screws that hold the rear end belt actually screw into the sensor board. And again, you know, a little Loctite here is your friend. Nothing too much, nothing too drastic, just a little bit of a, you know, Loctite on the tip of the screw when you go to reassemble it. We'll keep this thing from backing off. So, this doesn't really hold the inbell in place, but it does create the preload on the rear bearing. So definitely this is just as important as the sensor board holding it down as well. So definitely get these in here and make sure they're snug and tight. Next thing we're going to do is just flip the motor over. We're going to grab the rotor. I usually install the bearing on it right here in front of my hand. Just get it in there. And again, go real gentle. This is a lot of strength here on this magnet, so it should slide right in and seat right down into that bearing. Grab the front end bell, slide it on. Now here's something that you're going to want to make sure of too. You can see that there's four three millimeter motor screws and a single set of four millimeter motor screws. I like to make sure that my motor is clocked, in other words, positioned in the car properly so the solder tabs are facing in the upward direction. So look at your motor mount, see which way these screws need to face, mark the can before you disassemble, it's probably a good idea. If you need to make an adjustments, now is the time because you can do it in 60 degree increments. Just simply change the screw, you know, hold positions on the motor and then tighten those up. So again, you're just going to continue to reassemble the motor the same way you took it apart. Grab those three 30 second screws, a little bit of Loctite, 
line up those holes and just make sure that you get these in here snug. Again, a little Loctite goes a long way. This will prevent a failure in the future. It will prevent the motor from coming apart after all those huge jumps we pull off an 8 scale and all the abuse that we give these cars. So just finished putting the motor screw together. I always inspect the holes to make sure nothing's stripping out on me. And that's how you do the maintenance on a Tekken Redline T8 8 scale motor. <laughs>